Welcome back. Now, yesterday, the Randburg Magistrates Court heard a novel case in which a black businessman has been charged with criminal injuria after using the K-word against another following the souring of a multi-million rand deal. The matter stems from an SMS in which the accused is alleged to have referred to his erstwhile partner as a Bantustan boss and used the offensive word. The Human Rights Commission's Gershwell Brooks now joins us in the studio to talk more about this. Good evening to you and thank you for doing this. Of course, this all comes after the conviction and sentencing of Vicky Momberg essentially for the same offence. Indeed, um, they're very similar cases, and um, in this particular instance, obviously, both of these matters have been taken to the criminal, uh, you know, to criminal court. Uh, although we were involved in the Momberg matter at the equality court uh, met, uh, level, we were not involved in this particular one. But the principles still apply. Now, does it matter that in this case the accused is black? So, um, it's very interesting because if you look at it constitutionally, if you look at the principle of equality as set out in Section 9 of the Constitution, um, in this instance, it doesn't matter what the race of the particular individual is, although one could put forward an argument and dispute the, the basis of, say, racial discrimination, but hate speech in itself as being an offense in this instance or being an issue uh, doesn't you know, get expunged. Hate speech is central and, and definitely a concern in this particular But surely for, for anybody to demonstrate any level of injury, they have to be able to say that part of what was intended is what caused the offence. So in that context, why should it matter what you look like? No, no, definitely, definitely, I agree with you. But I think that uh, I'm, I'm coming from the perspective of what was the uh, actual offence in this particular instance. So we're looking at a criminal offence, a very specific one being criminal inuria. But if this matter to go to, say, the Equality Court or to any other uh, such process to look at the issue specifically of hate speech, uh, in this particular instance, we would find that there was uh, an act of hate speech that was uh, committed because it was hurtful and harmful. And under the criminal, criminal injuria rule, uh, does the same apply? So criminal inuria is in essence an affront to a person's dignity based on either your action or something that you have said. Um, so yes, it would apply. The, similar pro the, the exact same processes or principles that we picked up from the Momberg matter would apply in this particular instance. Let's just take a step back because part of the controversy is around the definition of who can and can't be racist and I'm going to pose the yeah. question to you can blacks be racist never mind to say white people or other groups but can they can they be racist towards their own wow that that is a <laughs> that is a very interesting one because I mean especially if we look at the specific definition of racism in this instance however I mean let's start from the starting point where there is a philosophical debate and a discussion at the moment around the idea of what do we define racism as being and whether black people innately can be racist towards other races in turn uh, more specifically white people in this instance the law does not look at the ph philosophical um, uh, you know, thinking Debates. behind this issue. The law looks at the issue of equality and what the outcome of a particular action is and what is then the, um, uh, you know, the correlating or the corresponding uh, punishment, so to speak, as a result. So therefore, black people under those circumstances, in that stricter sense of the word, of course they can be, uh, they can be racist. As um, far as the law is concerned. As far as the law is concerned. So when, uh, you know, when someone comes to the South African Human Rights Commission and says that as a white person, for example, and says that a black person had been racist towards them, we're not going to turn them away and say that, well, there is a very interesting sociological and philosophical debate around whether black people can be racist or not. It's a legal issue and it's pretty clear cut in that particular instance. Based on equality as a principle, as a starting point. And then, of course, what was the actual conduct or what was said in the process, though, that's what we have to view. And if it was racist, it was racist. So as far as the law is concerned, like the Michael Jackson song says, if you're thinking of being my brother, it don't matter if you're black or white. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, to be clear, there are other issues at play as far as this case is concerned, but it's the issue of race that has caught uh, the public imagination. Yeah. It's the centenary of Nelson Mandela's birth. Why are we still dealing with this issue? Why have we failed to so decisively uh, figure out the issue of race in South Africa? Well, I think it's a couple of things, and I think that there is obviously a, a serious uh, concern at the moment coming through from government, specifically from the Department of Justice, with proposed legislation around hate speech and hate crimes. And it's a massive debate, and I don't think that they and this, uh, the Commission at the moment is also looking at this from a very analytic pers uh, perspective and thinking that we can't necessarily say it's a bad thing or a good thing. Uh, obviously, it's dependent on what is in the legislation itself. 
but taking a, a couple of steps back, uh, we can't just want to legislate away racism. Uh, we can't just want to say to people who are racist or you know, within a racist society that racism is bad and that's where the conversation stops. I think that we do need to talk around real issues of substantive equality. We need to talk about real equality in South Africa. And therein lies the problem. As you will know, my, some might say, as the cliche goes, the law is a bit of an ass. And that if we talk about uh, race in the way that you framed it in a legal sense, it muddies the issues a little bit because uh, some will argue that one of the reasons blacks can't be racist, for example, is uh, the historical structural power differences between black and white people the world over. And that if you put everybody on, the, on an equal playing field, uh, you're diluting the issue, you're diluting the discussion. No, of course. And I think that there is a recognition even constitutionally and even within our legal framework that we can't just put everyone on the same uh, playing field. And that equality, and that's why we talk about substantive equality, which is very different from the notion of just simple equality. In fact, the other word that can, uh, that's regularly used is the concept of equity. Because equity then tries to put everyone on a similar um, uh, playing field, understanding that some people, because of their past, obviously needs a, uh, need an advantage at this point in time. However, going back to your initial argument around the issue of power dynamics and um, whether it is then possible for black people to be racist within that particular paradigm. 24 years within our democracy, there are many, many powerful black people. Um, it can't be argued that our president, Cyril Ramaphosa, is not powerful, both economically as well as uh, politically. It can't but while be he might have power to act against an individual, he certainly doesn't have the power to act against an entire grouping of people merely for who he is and who they are. In fact, the possibility exists, and I think our, the, the founding fathers of this democracy saw that possibility, and that is why we have the constitution that we have in place, and that is why South Africa is a, is, is a democratic constitu uh, constitutional, um, you know, that's what's at the very top. That, that's what's the most important thing. The constitution is the highest form of law in this country. Um, we used to be a parliamentary supremacy. That's the word I was looking for, constitutional supremacy. We're constitutional supremacy specifically for that reason. We used to be a parliamentary supremacy prior to 1994 where parliament could pass any particular law, any form of legislation, and we've seen what that has done and how it's taken back on people's rights. However, that is not possible any longer because the key question is, does it hold muster to the constitution? So if uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa decides tomorrow that all people below five foot tall should be taxed double, and that, I don't know, um, they should no longer dwell in houses, but rather in shacks only. The first question we're going to ask ourselves is, is that law going to hold up to a constitutional test? If it fails, then immediately the law is null and void, and those people don't have to be put in Look, those it's a debate particular. that's going to continue to rage in South Africa, because the very argument you're using about the president requires him to have that position to have that power, whereas racism in general is usually termed uh, even in, when it comes to ordinary people. Uh, but certainly this is an interesting test case in terms of mm. how this is all going to go uh, forward. Uh, that is, of course, uh, uh, Gershwin Brooks uh, from the Human Rights Commission. Now, it's a part of our Twitter conversation this evening. So let's take a look at some reaction to this case in terms of what people have been tweeting. I'm looking at my screen and it's hashtag Vicky Momberg was about criminal injury and I cannot see why the word would be less likely to cause injury to dignity if uttered by a black person. Uh, Crimin Endura is the likely finding here too, says Clint. I am an African. Uh, uh, Tabisa says the K word means a black person, so why should it be racist or insult? No, I'm not sure what Tabisa uh, is trying to say there. Uh, Carl uh, Ruddix Poodle <laughs> says TBF, it's not really hate speech uh, uh, when uh, members of the same race use slurs on each other. And that's part of what we've been discussing this evening. Uh, is it uh, the case uh, when indeed it's people of the same population group who are using these words? Those are just uh, some of the tweets that are coming through. Of course, it's part of our poll question and we'll bring you that result a little later on.